Now, HSBC is launching a major digital platform to revolutionize trade finance in its two largest markets, namely the United Kingdom and Hong Kong. HSBC trade solutions known as HTS will make trade simpler, faster and safer for customers going through integrated digital journeys. It has been developed in partnership with IT and business services company CGI. And I'm pleased to say we're here joined now by Vine uh, Mendonca, Chief Growth Officer by Trade and Receivable Finance at HSBC. And David York, Vice President, Head of Banking and Financial Markets UK at CGI. Gentlemen, welcome to Cybos TV. Morning. Thank you. It's great Morning. to see you guys. But look, let me start first with, with, with you, Vine, because look, we've had this announcement between HSBC and CGI. Tell us more about HTS and why is it so important within this context, the digital journey, seamless digital journey? Sure. So against a landscape of ongoing transformation and disruption, right? So whether that's new emerging technologies, the pandemic, geopolitical tensions, or as our clients transition to ESG, we've seen that our customers and their buyers and suppliers are rapidly evolving and embracing new business models. So as the world's leading trade bank, we facilitate $800 billion of trade annually, we thought it imperative to invest in a technology stack that would help us change fast, quickly, rapidly, and meet their clients' needs. So we launched HSBC Trade Solutions, or HTS, and it's basically the product engine, our co-product engine, and it forms the backbone of all the trade finance offerings that sit on top of it. It's built on, like you said, the CGI technology stack, but I'm gonna let David talk through more in terms of the agile, modular, flexible nature of it. But four things I'd say, that HTS does for us, right? So firstly, we can now deploy change faster across our network. So our customers get new capabilities faster and they have a consistent experience. The second is trade is increasingly taking place on new marketplaces, platforms, venues, and HTS allows us to connect to those platforms and venues. The third is it helps us converge different technologies together. So whether that's DLT, AI, and data, it brings it together, and finally, it's a step change in the client experience, new functionality around the user screens, billing, pricing. So yeah, we're really excited about it. David has teed you up quite nicely there. Tell us a little bit more about <laughs> this technology that's powered uh, HSBC Trade Solutions. Yeah, so um, CGI has been at the forefront of trade solutions for about 20 years now. And as Vinay just said, uh, our latest trade offering, Trade 360, sits at the very heart of, of the, uh, the HDS system. Um, and what it's providing uh, HSBC with is a single global solution that not only connects and interacts with the, the core banking systems at the bank, but also provides interoperability with fintechs, third parties, uh, and also the extended digital network that is emerging today. So as we roll out HTS, not just in Hong Kong and the UK, but across the world into 40 plus countries, what we're going to be delivering is a single global solution that provides both the enhanced customer digital experience that, that Vino was mentioning, but also a single set of processes that are common in, across all the markets that HSBC ultimately are working in. And Vino, I mean, the key thing which came out from your answer is that you need to have that speed. It has to be smooth. It has to be seamless, given the volume of trade that you're handling. So I get that. But can you share a few tangible examples of how HTS is enabling this because what you described is the concept behind yeah. it, but how does it work in the raw? How does it look? Sure. So uh, I'll probably give a couple of examples. Let's start one with the client experience, and then I'll talk a little bit later on the business models. But on client experience, HTS powers up a dashboard or a cockpit view, which is personalized for specific user personas in our client offices. And trade is complex, so we have accounts payable executives, we have shipping clerks, we have financial controllers, and they all can now personalize the data they see with transparency and visibility in real time across our network, right? So that's one example where to kind of, as we talk about supply chain resiliency, this visibility is really, really important. Uh, another example is the letters of credit, as you know, are pretty complex instruments to apply for. What HTS has done is through an intuitive process, which we worked with clients, we co-created, and it's very easy now to actually initiate a letter of credit in a very simple manner. You can't go wrong, really, as you do it. And the results are pretty strong. About a few years ago, only about half our transactions would reach us digitally from our clients. Today, that number is 88%. So most of our transactions are coming to us digitally from our clients. We process them faster and we have more satisfied customers. Our net promoter scores at a record high of 66 now. So that's one example. The other is just in terms of the new business models that are evolving 
really fast. So we're seeing clients increasingly wanting to trade on new marketplaces and venues. And we're able to connect through HDS and the native API construct that CGI brings. We can connect to these ecosystems, get data, take decisions, and fulfill product journey. So we're financing merchants on e-commerce marketplaces, on ERP packages like NetSuite, elsewhere. And like you say, the key there in that is if I'm a, a, a client of NetSuite, I can pay an invoice in the NetSuite app by using an HSBC trade finance capability that's embedded in there. So it's seamless. They don't need to come on to HSBC Net or something. And that's, that's what we're really excited about. This uh, re-platforming of HSBC's entire technology stack would seem like quite a daunting task ahead. I'd love to hear both of your thoughts on how you would go about this. David, I can start with you. Yeah, Johnny, I mean, it, uh, it's really easy to dive into the technology and talk about the technology when you're, when you're thinking about these global transformation programs. But in truth, um, I think the real success behind what we've achieved here is uh, really looking at the way we put together the partnership and the relationship and the governance models. So, yes, you've got to make sure that the technology is functionally rich and, and meets all the architectural requirements, but after that, the first step we took was looking at how we were going to work together. Um, and building a really robust sort of governance structure relationship enabled us to then sort of adapt and have robust conversations. And as you can appreciate, we've implemented this solution during an, an unprecedented period through the, the pandemic. And having that strong governance model has really been, I think, the, the story behind the success here, not just the technology. Vinay, how would you guys go about doing this? Yeah, so I think the first thing is we've always thought about this as a business transformation rather than landing or delivering technology. And I think that was critical, right? So what that means is, like I said earlier, we, we sit with our client users and we rethink processes from start We're using ethnography where we see them working in their environment, client design approach, and we deliver a solution that we know is more likely to work. Uh, like like kind of, uh, David alluded to, we've got a joint board or a joint team on everything we work, which includes the CGI resources, HSBC business resources, and IT, and we work together and iteratively design, so we kind of de-risk that whole delivery process. But I've got to agree with him that I think the multiple levels of governance between the two organizations help resolve a lot of issues, a lot of openness and transparency. We've had our fair share of issues and we're covering all the black eyes through those, but, <laughs> but, but it's, been, it's, it's been difficult through the pandemic, the remote working and everything else that we've had to do. Uh, but the openness and transparency of fixing issues when we saw them upfront really helped us get through this, right? And a final thing from a business standpoint is focusing on the benefits that the program realizes, the KPIs, rather than just landing technology. So things like the net promoter score, what's our digital penetration rate? That helps justify the investment in the program. Well, you guys seem pretty harmonious now, so I'm glad you've come out the other side. <laughs> <laughs> this is, it's a good relationship, it works. But, but look, David, what about CGI? What have you drawn experience-wise from working, apart from getting the black eyes, et cetera? Yeah, yeah I mean, look, HSBC are the, are the largest trade and receivables finance bank in the world, uh, and they're known for their innovation, and, and, they're, and they're sort of always pushing the boundaries. Um, CGI is the same. All right, and, and but also what this program has done for us is really, um, it's reaffirmed our ability to deliver global transformations really, really well. CGI is already known by our clients for delivering complex things, and this was certainly a very complex program. You know, seven countries, uh, you know, teams working in seven countries, 14 different time zones during a global pandemic. It doesn't get much more challenging than that. Um, and as I come back to what I said a minute ago, it, it came down to the relationship we built. We had to build that trust early. We had to deliver client value early, uh, and that was the absolute key to getting uh, through what were several milestones um, and achieving each one of those on time. So it was, it was a really challenging program. As, as Vinay said, we, we definitely had some, some robust conversations along the way, uh, but we also had to pivot and adapt. Uh, when COVID hit us, obviously we went from a very interlocked co-working sort of relationship into a distributed home working model, um, you know, where none of us could talk to each other face to face. We couldn't get in a room and solve those problems. Um, so the, the foundations that we built early on around that relationship were absolutely fundamental to us and, and we'll take those lessons forward for future projects. Well, look, guys, congratulations, because, look, so much is happening. You're going to do well, and I'm sure that we'll be following you to Toronto next year but, uh, to actually have a conversation about this. We're just following you because we're stalking you. And we're interested <laughs> in what you do. But, look, have a great Cyboss 2022, and we'll see you, oh, well, in the next four days and hopefully next year. Cheers. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you.